What we're talking about today is uh, factoring a higher degree polynomial such as this one. This one is not on the assignment that I gave you, but it's real simple one to copy down. So what we want to do is uh, factor this. We're going to try to start by factoring a GCF. If there's a GCF, that's always the easiest place to start. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the x that is in common in everything. That's 2x to the third minus 3x squared plus 1. Now, I could factor that using some of the other methods of factoring that we have learned, maybe by grouping, maybe by quadratic uh, form, but this one is not factorable in either way. So what I want to do is graph it in the calculator and look for roots. So I'm going to go to the y equals, and I'm going to hit graph, and uh, you can see that I've graphed it. Now, it's not very clear where it's crossing the y-axis, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, which is option two, and uh, that'll show me a little bit clearer where it's going to be crossing. You can see that it crosses the x-axis at about negative one-half, maybe, and it also crosses the x-axis at positive one. It at least touches there. So what I'm going to do is pick one of those points. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick positive one. So we'll say x is equal to one. Now, x equals one would be coming from a factor that would be x minus one. x minus one, if I set it equal to zero, gets me x equals one. So that's the factor that would correspond to the root where it's crossing. So I know that x goes into this equation. I know that x minus 1 goes into this equation. What I don't know is what happens when I pull the x minus 1 out of the original. So what I'm going to do here is polynomial division. So off to the side somewhere, I'm going to go ahead and divide the original equation by my factor, which is x minus 1. So I have 2x to the third minus 3x squared plus, well, I have to add in a 0x because I don't have an x term, plus 1. And I'm just going to go ahead and factor this out using the process that we've done several times, which is long division. What number multiplies by x to get to x, or 2x cubed? And that would be a 2x squared. Using the distributive property, I multiply it down, and that is going to be 2x cubed, which is good that it's the same, minus 2x squared. Now, when I do the subtraction for this, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that out. I'm going to subtract these guys and say negative 3 minus a negative 2 is going to be a negative 1x squared. Of course, we need to bring down the 0x next, and we want to say, what do I have to multiply the x by to get to the negative 1x squared? Well, x times negative 1x would get me negative 1x squared. So that's what I'm going to do. Negative 1x squared, distribute, and that'll be a positive 1x. Of course, when we do the subtraction, 0 minus a, neg a positive 1 is negative 1x. Bring down the positive 1 plus 1. Then the last number, I say, what do I have to multiply x by to get to negative 1x? Again, it's negative 1. And we're going to go ahead and distribute that. And we'd say that's a negative 1x. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Now, we should get a remainder of 0 here. If we don't get a remainder of 0, that means my factor, the x minus 1, was not actually a factor. It's going to be close, but it's not actually the factor. So we uh, have confirmed that x minus 1 is a factor, and that when I pull it out, I will be left with the 2x squared minus 1x minus 1. Now, the question is, is that factorable? Because remember, we're trying to factor it completely. So now we're going to focus in on this part and see if that part is actually factorable or not. It might be. I don't really know. What I want to do is I want to go through the trinomial factoring methods that we've talked about, which is multiply 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Two numbers that multiply to negative 2 that add to a negative 1. Well, um, that would be a positive 2 and a negative 1, which will add to a positive 1 that's close. But it's really a negative 2 and a positive 1 will add to the negative one that's in the middle. So we're going to go ahead and rewrite it. All right, well, that's all well and good. 2x squared minus 2x plus 1x minus 1. And this is a grouping problem, something that we've done 100 times. We can group that together. Let's take out the 2 that's in front of those. And there's an x that's in common as well, which will leave me with x minus 1. We also can pull out a positive 1 from the second group, which will leave me with 1x minus 1. Now you see that the leftovers are the same, so grouping worked just great. And we have the fully factored version of the red part to be 2x plus 1 times x minus 1. Of course, we still have the other factors. So there's already another x minus 1, so I'm just going to change this one to a squared. And we have the x that is in front. So the fully factored version of this is y is equal to x times 2x plus 1 times x minus 1 quantity squared. And that would be the solution. 
now we want to do another example that's sort of like that. Let's go ahead and do this one. Again, it's not on your paper. It's very similar. Uh, we're going to use the same general process. We're going to pull out a GCF. X is in common. So we'd say 4x cubed minus 3x plus 1. Now this is similar, but it's not the same. This time we're missing an x squared term. But it's the process that I have to go through is figuring out what the heck goes into this thing. What is a factor of that? I don't know. So I'm going to type it into the calculator, 4x to the third power, and then minus 3x, and then plus 1, and go ahead and hit graph. Now I'm still zoomed in, and that's uh, helpful for me in this case. You can see that it's clearly crossing at negative 1 and somewhere close to a positive 1 half. And we could do either one, but let's just say x is equal to a negative 1. Now that'll get me the factor x plus 1. So I know x plus 1 should, theoretically, go into this thing evenly. So I can factor that out to be x times x plus 1 times something. But I don't know what that something is. So I'm going to have to figure out what the something is. I'm going to have to divide the x plus 1 out of there. So I'm going to say x plus 1, big division bar. And then we have 4x cubed. I need a 0x squared, a minus 3x, and a positive 1. Uh, then what I want to do is uh, figure out what multiplies by the x to get to the 4x cubed, which in this case is a 4x squared. Distribute 4x squared times x is 4x cubed plus 4x, and I'll do the subtraction. That'll cancel, leave me negative 4x, bring down the negative 3x. Of course, this is squared. And I will then say what do I have to multiply x by? to get to the negative 4x. Well, that's a negative 4x. That'll give me a negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times positive 1 is, again, a negative 4x. Subtract. That'll cancel. Negative 3 minus negative 4 is positive 1x. Bring down. Plus 1. We could then say, what do I have to multiply x by to get to x plus 1? Well, clearly that's 1. And I'll multiply it out, and I'll get 1x plus 1, and 0 after I do the subtraction. It's good. X, minus, x plus 1 is obviously a factor, with the solution being 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. <coughs> now the question is, is that factorable? Is the leftover part factorable? It's not down to just a linear factor yet, so I should always try. I have to multiply 4 times 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Two numbers that multiply to 4 that add to a negative 4. Well, negative 2 and negative 2 make 4 and negative 4, so yes, this is factorable. I could rewrite it, 4x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 1, and factor it by grouping. So I'm going to group that junk and that junk together, and we'd say that is a 2x, and then that is going to leave me with 2x minus 1. When I look at the second group, I could have a, well, 1 that is in common, and that's going to be a negative 2x plus 1. So I can't just pull out a 1, I have to pull out a negative 1, which would be a positive 2x minus 1. Now we can factor that out. We still have x. We still have x plus 1. Now we are given 2x minus 1 and 2x minus 1 again. So my fully factored version is y is equal to x times x plus 1 times 2x minus 1 squared. And this would be my solution to that problem.